What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got a couple of absolutely fantastic and spectacular duels for you guys to check out. The first one is going to be a Luna Light Mirror match, and you're probably looking at the opening hand, and you're saying, how on earth is this a Mirror Match, Cap G? I mean, it's obvious that the deck at the top is Lunar Lights. I mean, the guy basically has five Luna Light cards in his hand. Tinky is going to search a Luna Light, so essentially it's five cards, but this one don't really look like a Luna Light. It's a really weird build of Luna Lights. I'm not sure why he's running uh, Tiamaton, but it is actually going to be a deck that focuses on Luna Light plays. When he activates card destruction, he probably will draw into some Luna Light monsters. So let's go ahead and roll this and you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. Card destruction, interesting tech in Luna Lights. I mean, if you're running enough dangers, I guess hypothetically it can work. Also, we can get Serenade, Dance, and Perfume in the Graveyard. So I guess there's that, but uh, I don't know if I'd run it. Anyways, his opponent did get an extra card because his yellow martin was sent to the graveyard so it is actually going to trigger i guess right now card destruction is like a neg one for the player who activated it it's fine he's going to be able to recover most of his resources through um the advantage of kaleido check also gets yellow martin in the graveyard by way of danger he is playing some um He's playing some Wing Beast plays in here. You guys see the the Force Tricks that get some Zephyros the Elite. He did not normal summon the entire time. So, obviously, Zephyros the Elite can kind of be the play there. Goes into Rusty Bardish. Now, it is my opinion, if you're playing double L's, right? I feel like if you're going first, since Luna Lights naturally want to go second, I kind of feel like you need to be able to drop number 41 Bagusta. That should be your main play, your main way of defending yourself. I guess you could go for Evil Swarm... Um, um, nightmare the one that flips monsters face down like that's an option i guess anyways he's going to continue on and uh, he goes for time thief for doer he's going to actually blow up his own copy of tiger which actually is going to trigger it to summon a monster okay that was not a bad play at all he gets to summon a monster, and um, he's going to go for Tiger King. Now, he still had the two level fours on field after Tiger King, so I was like, okay, this is not bad. He'll go for 41 Bagusta, and then he'll just be able to kind of, you know, grind the game out against his opponent, and uh, his opponent shouldn't be able to get that many offensive plays, but he is going to go for something crazy here that I did not see coming after activating Tiger for what seems like the 15th time in his turn. He's actually going to link summon into Nightmare Griffin, which I was like, okay, not bad. Now he actually has has even more disruption even more ways of slowing his opponent down he's going to continue on he's going to summon that bagusta and summon a leo dancer plus get a fog blade and time thief for doer is coming back in the end phase i looked at this board and i was like holy smokes this is actually quite amazing for a turn one luna light play especially when he kind of took some negs earlier in his turn with like card destruction but this is the power of what luna lights can do and keep in mind this is all tcg legal there no OCG cards. You got your 41. You got Leo Dancer chilling in defense mode. You still have Time Thief for Doer. You have your Griffin, and then you also have a Phantom Knight Fog Blade. I was like, yo, that's pretty legitimate. But his opponent gets the answer. I saw that and I almost broke into tears for this player at the bottom because I thought this is uh this is rest in pepperonis. This impermanence is going to almost certainly negate your Bagusta, which it does, and now he can actually play, he can play Yu-Gi-Oh! now. And um, you know, Luna Lights, uh, they can break this board fairly easily because they can summon leo dancer as well he is going to go with luna light fusion even if the fog blade was going to be a problem uh he could have just simply used the fighting daruma he could have just baited out the fog blade by attempting to pop his Tinky and attempting to pop the Fog Blade. So the Fog Blade was never going to be like a legitimate defense in this situation. I mean, against Leo Dancer, you can't target her. So what's that going to do? And luckily, he still has the Wolf, which he added back to his hand. So he can go a double Leo Dancer. Now he's banished Kaleido Chick. He can't activate anything during the battle phase. Attacks in the Leo Dancer, nukes his opponent's entire field. And then each Leo Dancer can just, you know, do massive amounts of damage as they're both sitting on 36 attack and obviously they can attack twice plus he has this guy he's um what uh he's 1600 attack because yeah he's getting a tinky gain as well but that was a pretty incredible that was an, a pretty incredible duel i mean we had an, an incredibly stellar like turn one defense and it was broken by the top deck and permanence i had i mean that was a really good luna light turn one like it was really strong next duel 
we got cybers facing down pendulums and honestly i get so many people who send cyber duels to the channel i'm sure some of you guys are like cap how come you never upload my cyber duels i swear to goodness every single one of them is the same it, it's always a, it's the cybers player always making these like scuff turn one extra links and <laughs> it almost always involves the uh Cynet codec because this is the card that allows them to just get a whole bunch of resources the problem that i have with it is like they don't usually have any negation built in those extra links so it just feels kind of mediocre now if you do run microcoder this guy right here you get the search sign that conflict and what this does is it gives you an infinity barrier so if you get the infinity barrier in the process of your extra link now you're interesting me this guy is actually not going to go for an extra link he's going to go for a little bit of a different play by the way man this card cr achiever this card's so good um when i was first playing salaman grades way back in november i was actually trying to like make this card work it's just man if this card was fire attribute oh my goodness it would be so nuts in salaman grades anyways he is going to discard his sign net conflict for now don't worry he will get it back later in the turn but he's actually going to go a little different when he's going for his extra deck plays what he's doing is i don't know if you guys notice he is going for a lot of different mechanics we see a synchro summon i think we're going to see some xc summoning as well we see an xc monster he's going to add that sign that conflict right back to his hand and he's going for these different mechanics including rituals and fusions and all that good stuff clocks farts i there's a ritual summon there's a fusion summon he's doing all this so that he can go into firewall dark fluid dragon this guy right here load your graveyard up with a whole bunch of different mechanics and now this guy can get an insane amount of counters it's actually just checking to see how many different mechanics are in the graveyard and turns out he has four of them so this guy's attack actually is going to go up four or excuse me eight thousand in the battle phase like this is now a one card otk if he was going to attack his opponent directly keep in mind he still does have that conflict which is an infinity barrier and this guy can negate monster effects as well let's see what his opponent is going to throw at him it's not exactly the greatest defensive board ever but at least it does have some like it, it has some dis disruptive uh you know potential there so he's going to pendulum summon He's going to go ahead and get Zephyr Divine Strike. We know Electromite is coming. Uh, I probably would have just shotgunned and negated the Electromite effects, but I guess it would not have been worth it because I believe you only negate one of the Electromite effects, so I'm not sure that that would have actually been right. I probably just would have ended up misplaying there. Maybe I would have tried to hit the draw effect. He is going to use the Cyanet Conflict to just go ahead and get rid of that card. His opponent is looking for big damage. You're going for Boros War Dragon. This is where a misunderstanding of how cards work definitely comes in to hurt this guy he's going to attack boros war dragon into the dark fluid dragon thinking ah cap no problem i'm just going to cut this guy's attack in half but i think he forgot that this guy also has negation and by the way look at this guy's attack this guy is almost 14,000 attack during the battle phase so boros load or excuse me boros war dragon tries to kick in he says nope i'm just going to negate that now you gotta attack straight into the face now boros war dragon can't die by battle but <laughs> to quote everybody from yugi arc v you still take the damage i mean he took 7500 damage in one attack and it was his attack by the way so i don't really see any way that this guy is going to survive all he has to do is just attack with uh dark fluid dragon i think when dark fluid dragon negated ball swords effect that was just one of those moments where it's like mistakes have been made he's gonna scoop it up at this point he knows that he's not gonna be uh, survive this even if his opponent wasn't able to get three more monsters on the field all he simply has to do is attack with dark fluid dragon dark fluid dragon would go up six thousand attack and he's not going to be able to survive that even if boar sword dragon tries to activate the effect he can just actually no boar sword is only when it attacks if i'm not mistaken yeah when this card um the when this card attacks so it wouldn't even matter he could just attack and he would have 9500 so yeah this card don't sleep on it you know i mean i wish he would have had maybe one more defensive card it would have made it a little bit easier because uh his opponent could have maybe tried to throw something at this or god forbid if he had a kaiju that just would have been like <laughs> that just would have been soul crushing but dark fluid dragon getting the job done with uh in basically 14,000 attack anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed those short duels if you did give the video a thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos and you know what we're so close to 10 minute ad revenue we might as well just go ahead and show the deck this is 
what the Cyberus deck looks like on paper. As you can see, there are a whole lot of three and two ofs in the deck. Lady Debug used to be one of them, but then, you know, it ended up getting hit because of Salaman Greats. Although, I said that it was only a matter of time before this card got hit anyways if Konami wanted to keep making uh, Cyberus archetypes because of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Frames anime. I just personally feel like, you know, there's really, there was no hope for Cyberus until we got the announcement that, like, uh, Cyanet Codec was coming to the TCG. And without Cyanet Conflict, I just kind of felt like there was never really a point because Cybers are a fairly linear deck. Like, if you don't have uh, Cyanet Codec, you're really not putting a lot of monsters on board. I do like the fact that they do kind of have this one shot playstyle now with Dark Fluid Dragon. You can summon a lot of different mechanics in your first turn relatively easily. And now you actually, like, you know, you have a way of harnessing all of those plays into this one big colossal beater. You guys saw the attack of this monster it should be able to one shot just about anything that your opponent is going to throw at you and so many of these cards like uh sign at fusion and sign at ritual like all of these cards are completely searchable from the deck so you actually don't want to draw any of them you essentially just want to search them uh through your natural combo by using cards like clock spartite and using all these other like link monsters that search these uh these summoning cards 